Feels like I'm going executed. <laughs> Blindfolds are on and my stomach is in my throat. At least the food doesn't have a long way to go. There's 23 ingredients in this dish and I need to identify at least eight to be able to create something relatively decent in the next round. You have three minutes to taste and feel and identify as many ingredients as you can, and then two minutes to write them down. We're going to lift those cloches now. Off you go. I'm nervous. Um, I just get my hands right into it. I need to start tasting things. I need to get things into my mouth as quickly as possible. She's feeling it, just deciding what it is and then putting it in her mouth. Oh, she'll find the herbs that way, which is great. I don't like hot chilies because I can't handle the heat. That's the first thing that I get after the first mouthful. I get jalapeno. <laughs> Tasted a prawn. Tasted chicken. There's okra in there. It's soupy. This is gumbo. <laughs> Sean was basically in his food. He had his face almost in it. It was kind of gross to watch, it was, but I found it, for some reason, really funny. <laughs> it tastes great. I'm feeling quite confident at this stage. You know, I've found there's definitely prawn, there's definitely tomato, and there's definitely parsley. I can make a dish with that. You have one minute to go. Oh, my God. no idea what the dish is and I'm really worried that I'm not going to get enough ingredients that I could work with. It's just hand mouth, hand mouth, hand mouth in this situation. Difficulty is, yes, yeah, taste and identify, but then you've got to register all those things, not forget them because they've got to write them down later. A little bit of a mind blank and I'm feeling pretty frantic. I've got to get my nerves under control. Ten seconds. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Sit up, hands down. Time's up. I just need to start writing. I know I get really distracted really easily. I just need to get the things down as quickly as possible. Otherwise, I'm going to forget. You have two minutes to write down as many ingredients as you can. Blindfolds off, start writing. I honestly felt like I was in an exam at school. I knew the answers. I was just so bad at concentrating on putting them down. I'm pretty sure that it was gumbo, but I'd never made gumbo before in my life. You have 10 seconds left. I'm feeling really stressed and my mind just blanks. I can't even think of anything to guess. So I'm definitely scared that I'm not gonna have any ingredients to work with today. Three, two, one. Hands down, close your books. Well, we've tallied up your answers, but before we reveal who's done best, who maybe hasn't done quite as well, who reckons they know what this dish is? Colin? I think it's gumbo. Absolutely. Louisiana gumbo. <laughs> classic of the American South. I actually haven't eaten gumbo before. I'm really nervous about getting, getting these ingredients right. First one, everybody got chili jalapeno. The next ingredient, everybody got right too, which was salt. Next one, prawns. Prawns, tick. I didn't put that down. <laughs> so, Georgia, what happened there? I just, maybe I missed it in the bowl, or maybe I ate it and just didn't taste it, but yeah. Next one. Onions. Thyme. Tomatoes. Celery. Chicken. I got chicken. Huge relief for me. I should be okay. This next ingredient, six of you got it correct. Chicken stock. Garlic, parsley, bay leaf. Mm. Next one, a gumbo staple, okra. 
I can live without okra. Anyway, it sounds like orca, the whale. That's Next ingredient, oysters. Oh, yeah, oysters, yeah. Kransky. Sausage. Flour. Good staple to have on your bench, eh? Spring onions. Next ingredient is oil. Sean, Tash, you're the only two people that have oil to cook with. It's really going to be a challenge cooking without oil today. I need to come up with another way to get oil into my dish. Bacon. Only one person got this. Butter. Who got this right? I did. Colin. That's a huge advantage for me. I'm going to make that butter work every step of the way. These last three ingredients no one got correct. Capsicum. Filet powder. So I've got a tea-like flavour. And the final ingredient... Tabasco. I am kicking myself that I didn't get chicken, bacon. I, I know I'm at the bottom end. Remember, every ingredient you guess correctly, you'll be able to cook with in the second round. So, Amy, you got 15 correct. I feel good. God, I've impressed myself. <laughs> A little pod, three of you got 13 ingredients right. Kira, Sean and Tash. Well done. Rachel, Georgia, you got 11 ingredients correct. I'm quite happy that I chose 11 ingredients because I was a bit worried about the whole taste test thing, so maybe today I'm going to be safe. Colin, you got 10 ingredients right. Brent, nine ingredients. And Sam, I'm sorry to say you got the least on seven. At this point, I'm, I'm pretty nervous about going into the second round. Are you double knotting this thing? Triple knotting. Is that too tight? <laughs> this is like an interrogation. <laughs> I'm sorry I shouldn't laugh, that's not funny. <laughs> he just looks, <laughs> looks so cute sitting there. I am delighted I'm not down there. It's a really, really tough elimination challenge. Is that positioned properly? Yeah. So being able to get out of that is unbelievable. To sit there with a blindfold on, it's just a weird scenario. My heart rate is going through the roof and I can feel us just tense and anxious about what's going to happen. It's going to be a nightmare. You have three minutes and your time starts now. First thing that I'm touching feels ridiculously weird. What is that? I'm freaking out. I don't even know if this is food. There's lots of ingredients, 29 of them. Dig in and find stuff. I'm feeling the, the ingredients and it seems like they're quite separate, so I'm trying to taste them individually so I don't get the flavours confused. I pick up a squishy brown thing. I taste and it tastes like egg yolk, so I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with that. Remember, every ingredient you identify correctly, you're going to get to cook with, so every ingredient is going to count. I have no idea what this dish is. There are things that I'm eating, and I have no idea what they are. I just can't place them to save me. Oh. <laughs> Can we have water? As soon as I taste kimchi, I know we're in Korea. And I'm not great with Korean food, so... Uh. You should have about three or four at least by now. I'm feeling really lucky because I think I'm blind tasting my favourite dish. <laughs> I can taste garlic, I can taste ginger, I can definitely taste gobi chang paste. I think this is a bibimbap. Come on guys, time's ticking. Who's going to get them all? John, you're going to get them all? Come on. All right, ten seconds. Nine, eight, eight seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one. Time's up, hands out of the bowl. Time's up and I still have no idea what it is that I just ate. So I just need to write down as many things as I can remember. The more ingredients I've got to play with, then the easier it's got to be to make something. Right, you can take your blindfolds off. 
You'll see there's a pen and pad. You've got two minutes. Time starts now. Time starts and I just write like mad. I'm abbreviating, I'm not spelling correctly, I'm just like... We only get to cook with the ingredients that we correctly name, so getting as many of these right as possible is, is absolutely imperative today. Come on, guys, time's ticking. I write all the ingredients that I think in that dish, but I'm also doing something really smart and writing down oil, salt, pepper, vinegar. They're key flavour ingredients, and I know that if I get them, I can make anything taste good. I'm starting to panic. One minute to go. I'm struggling to write anything down. Time's running out and I'm worried. My mindset's gone blank. Come on, write! Come on, write! Last few things. Oh, I've just forgotten all the ingredients in there. Go on, Johnny. Ten seconds to go. This is my favourite dish. I should know all the ingredients, but my mind's just gone blank. Five, four, I'm worried three, I won't have enough ingredients for the two, next round. One, hands down. All I'm thinking of is I let myself down. I could have listed a lot more ingredients. We love a blind tasting. So, anybody got any idea what that dish was? Yep. What was it? It's a bibimbap. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. I love it. Well done, John. That dish is one of my favourite dishes in the world, but I'm just feeling really, really nervous. I don't even know what I've written down. Hopefully, I've got enough to, to create a dish. We were delighted to see that there were several ingredients that all of you got right. Shiitake mushroom. Another one you all got right, you should have done two, was rice. The last one you all got right is, and it was front and centre, egg. Koreans absolutely love this. Four of you got it right. Garlic. Four of you got sesame seeds. Only three of you got lava. We also accepted nori. So I wonder who missed this one? Beef. Beef is the key ingredient in this bibimbap, and I didn't pick it. Mm. I'm really starting to panic now. What else have I missed? This is a nightmare. Cucumber. Carrot. I'm terrified I won't have enough ingredients for the next round. Daikon. Peanut oil. Sugar. So many of these flavours going on, you could have easily missed this one. Salt. John, you didn't get that. I'm kicking myself. I didn't write down salt. One of the cornerstones of Korean cooking, kimchi. Kimchi is a traditional Korean side dish made of fermented cabbage. It has a real spicy, sour flavour to it. Ginger. Bean sprouts. Soy sauce. Gochujang chilli paste. Spinach. Zucchini. Well done, Sarah. That was a good pick, actually. Georgia, you got this right. Apple cider vinegar. Ooh. Nobody got pickled daikon. Dried anchovies. Garlic chives. Ah, oh, garlic chives. Damn it. And chestnuts. Oh. And we would have been absolutely stunned if you got this one right. It was bracken or fern. A lot of wild and foraged ingredients in Korean food. And finally, anyone? Fish sauce. Ah. <laughs> this is a total nightmare. I should have gotten all those ingredients. I just hope I've got enough to keep me in the competition. One of you got 16 ingredients. It's really impressive. Sarah, congratulations. Wow, really? Good work. Yeah. Cool. Good job, mate. <laughs> Georgia, you also did really well. 15 correct oh, answers. Thank you. Matthew, your palate's obviously pretty good. 13 right. And Rose, you got 11 ingredients right. John, you were the least impressive taster. You only correctly identified 10 ingredients. I think I just went blank. Um, when I was writing it down, it was, yeah. 
I'm really disappointed that I've only managed to pick out 10 ingredients from that dish. It's gonna be a tough cook today. this smell but I don't really know what it is yet. Mm. I'm just thinking of Nonna's homemade pasta but it has a very different texture. Right guys, blindfolds off. Write down your answer. I write down pesto and I'm hoping that it's not salsa verde. Show us your answer. Guys, you're all correct. Oh. I'm so relieved <laughs> that I got that right and stuck with my guns. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I think it is a type of mushroom. I stick my finger in it and it's a bit thick and gluggy and it smells a little sweet, so there goes that idea. I'm not sure if it's dates or prunes, and I've just got to take a guess. Alrighty. Write your answer down. OK, all happy? Show us your answers. All right. One wrong. I think it's me. Oh. Yeah. Joe? Yeah. It was Majul Date. So Date was perfectly oh, acceptable. It's going to get a little bit tougher now. A little clue this one's not an ingredient, it's a dish. I can smell something, can you? Mm. Yeah. I'm having a smell of this dish and it does not ring any bells whatsoever for me. Get the fork and I have a taste. And the first thing I get is what well, feels like a mouthful of cabbage, which is like, it's not a bowl of cabbage. I'm sure it's not a bowl of cabbage, it's a dish. I'm feeling noodles. The smell, the feel brings me back to Thailand. Right guys, time's up. Sorry. They take the bowl away and I still have no idea what it is. You can write your answer. OK. Steph, done. Ready? Nope. Let's go. Wow. Steph, I'm sorry. What was it's it? not fried rice. What was it? It's pad thai. Ah. Please join Joe. You're in round two. Okay, we're looking for not just what it is, but what the flavour is. I find a little biscuit some cream in the centre and really smooth top and bottom. So I know it's a macaron. I know it's a macaron. I eat these all the time, but we have to identify the flavour. It kind of tastes like tahini, which is something that I have all the time. I'm thinking it could be like a sesame seed flavour. Yeah, it's quite obviously a macaron and all I can taste is nuts. And I just don't know which one to write down. Waiters, thank you. Tell us what it is. I don't want to be in round two. Cooking up against Steph and Joe, they're both amazing cooks. That just adds more pressure. Right, let's have a look. Wow. Simon, you're wrong. Waleed, you're right. Kyle, you're wrong. Larissa, you're right. Christina, you're right. 
Ben, you're wrong. Sorry. Right, the first one-inch cube. Ben, we're starting with you. You can feel, you can smell. I know for sure what this is. It's chocolate. Chocolate? Well done. First cube. All right, Jess, you're next. I'm tasting the cube, and all I can taste is cheese, but I just I can't really tell what type of cheese it is. It's got a crumbly texture, but I still can't picture what it is. I don't eat a lot of cheese, and I'm really worried that this cube is definitely the one cube that's going to be sending me up into the gantry or into the next round. Oh, gosh. Parmesan? Parmesan cheese. Jess? I'm sorry, oh, it's not Parmesan cheese. What is it? What goes in a Greek salad? Feta. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I'm in the next round. I'm really devastated because if I'm going up against Reese or Ben, such wonderful cooks, and I am feeling the pressure at this point, I can just feel my dream just drifting away. There you go, Reese. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this has to be banana. Oh, I don't like banana. Like, I like banana bread. <laughs> you don't have to taste it if you don't want to. <laughs> I like banana powder pops. What is it, Reese? Banana. That's absolutely right. Your least favourite thing, banana, Reese. But I'm not the biggest fan of just normal, basic banana. This should be interesting. Right in front of you. Have a go. Bloody un-Australian to get this one wrong. Avocado. Mmm. How do you like it? What do you have it on? Uh, toast. Toast. With feta. <laughs> Too soon, Gary. You are absolutely right. Well done. Grace. Pear. That's correct. Oh. Pumpkin. Absolutely right. Well done. Pumpkin. Orange. Well done. Carrot. Well done. What a perfect degustation this is, Reese. There you go. Thank you. It's my turn to guess again, and the ingredients are squishy. It's a bit weird. I can smell it. It's like a fish or something. Oh. I know this is a fish. I'm tossing up between salmon or tuna. 
I can't seem to taste the flavour, but I'm trying to pick up the texture. Um, it's a raw salmon. Reese, take your blindfold off. Oh, it's tuna. Yeah. As soon as I see tuna, my heart completely sinks. It means now I'm in the third round of the elimination. That is tuna and not raw salmon. That means you, Reese, yep. in the third round with Jess. Well done, Ben. You're safe. Congratulations. Up to the gantry. You're in our top five. Well done. Good job, Ben. I've made it into the top five. Oh, who'd have thunk it? Good job, man. Thanks, brother. I'm watching from the gantry and I can actually see the spears, but I have no idea what they are. I'm really glad I'm not down there. This is going to be tough. Right, let's kick this thing off, shall we? Everybody ready? Yes. Tamara, you're first, so? I'm really nervous. All my other senses are heightened. I just hope that one of those senses includes taste. I pick up one of the small spheres and I start to squish it in my fingers to try to determine the texture. It's feeling kind of squishy and a bit sticky, almost like a date. It definitely doesn't taste like a date. It actually tastes disgusting to me. It's something I don't like. I'm just trying to think of what it might be. To make you smile? No. It's licorice. So licorice? Yes. Tamara? You're right. <laughs> I hate licorice. <laughs> I'm absolutely stoked that I've got the first one right and I have my fingers crossed that I don't need to taste again. Nicole, you're next. Yep. Off you go. First thing I notice in my fingertips is that it's a really hard texture. Once I start eating it, it's very dry and it's very obvious. Do you know what it is? Coconut. You're right. <laughs> Next one, Samuel. I'm pretty confident with my ability to identify flavours, but I don't know how much of that I rely on the ability to see the food as well. I have no idea what I'm going to have to put in my mouth. It's pretty scary. Yum. As soon as it hits my lips, I know it's milk chocolate. Milk chocky. Well done. You're right. And I'm super relieved. Right, Ray, you're next. I feel pretty confident and comfortable with the blind taste test. I've been lucky enough to do wine tasting, so I feel pretty comfortable in my knowledge regarding different tastes. Off you go. I have a bit of a feel. I can't really identify the texture. I have a smell. I'm not getting much of a scent. Pop one in my mouth, and I can't really identify what this is. You can feel the tension and the pressure just elevate completely. I'm not really sure what this is. Right? Watermelon. Watermelon. Your answer's watermelon? Yes. I'm sorry, Ray. That's incorrect. 
Take your blindfold off. Oh, grapes. I'm really disappointed. I was pretty confident that I was the favorite to get through this taste test, and now I'm the first person that's gonna cook in round two. It's really shaken my confidence going into this cook. Man, that shows you how hard it is. Right, Michelle, you're next. I'm feeling so scared because I'm not sure if I have a strong palate or not. You can't see anything, you have to just concentrate. It's crunchy to begin with and it's very spicy, it just like tingles in your tongue. Oh, I Start spitting it out. I just was like, what is this? <laughs> I just hope it doesn't get into George's face. <laughs> oh my god, it's disgusting. <sighs> but I think I know. It tastes Asian. Ginger? Well done, you're right. <laughs> I know because my mom cooks a lot of it at home. Back to my Asian root, ginger. All right, Jess, I'm coming for you. Bring it on. I'll give it a few chomps, and I know it's definitely a nut. It's got a creamy texture, so I'm pretty convinced it's going to be a macadamia. It's macadamia nuts. Congratulations, well done. Callan. It's really nerve wracking. I want to make it through round one and uh, hopefully end up on the gantry. I put the ingredient in my mouth and it's a creamy sort of fresh fruity texture to it. I'm thinking it could be a date, and I'm thinking it also could be a prune. They're so similar in texture. What is your answer? Um. Here you go, Callum. Today's elimination is made up of two rounds. Round one's a blind tasting. Ray's already out and facing the cook-off in round two, and I really don't want to join him. This week being sweet week, all the ingredients that we're going to taste today could be used in a dessert, and in this modern day of food, who knows what they could be. Is it a prune? No, I'm going to go dried dates. What is your answer? Uh, I'm really scared that I'm going to get this wrong, but I'm just going to go with my gut. Dry dates. Callum? You're correct. Well done. Oh, I'm so relieved. That was a very close call. Benjamin. I pick up a sphere and it's a little slimy in texture, pretty soft to touch. Oh, damn it, I know this bloody flavour. Without sight, you're relying on taste, texture and smell, but all of that doesn't make sense if you can't see what you're eating. I know this flavour. What are you thinking? It's a very familiar taste. It just reminds me of summer. It's rock melon. So your answer is rock melon? Yes. Sorry, Benjamin. <sighs> it's not rock melon. It's a really familiar flavour. It is. Try it again now. You know what it is? Oh. Banana! Oh. 
I must eat a banana every week, two or three of them, and I can't pick it in a blind tasting. Fruits are hard. Oh, mm. Make sure the fruits yeah. are hard. Tamara, back to you again. There's only one more spot left in that second round, but now I've got to taste again. I need to get through this second tasting and then I'm sure that I'll be fine. I pick up the ingredient as I did before. I really want to try to feel the texture of the ingredient. And I'm trying to, you know, squeeze it, but it's not really breaking apart like the first ingredient did. My mind's racing about the ingredients I most often use in desserts, but it really has quite a neutral, very, very subtle flavour, and I'm trying to think what the hell it could be. Is it an obvious flavour to you, or is it something you're struggling to find? A little bit struggling. It's definitely a fruit, like similar to watermelon kind of texture, like when you get to the rind part, mm -hmm. but not watermelon. What about the flavour? Mmm. It doesn't have a whole lot of flavour. I'm feeling really unsure. I'm not feeling confident at all right now. Can't determine what it is. I'm going to need to push you for an answer. Yep. Um, I'm going to go with rock melon. So rock melon is your answer? Tamara, I'm sorry. It's not rock melon. Oh. Texture of melon has very little flavour. Cucumber. Not something that I thought would turn up in a sweet ingredient challenge, but now I've got to cook with it. Let's get this blind tasting underway. Michael, you're first. Step up. You gentlemen have to turn round now. When the cosh is revealed and I start trying to smell and I, I can smell something savoury. Taste some pork. There's some bacon around it or some kind of cured meat. Prosciutto, I think. Oh. Bite into a carrot and I know it's a carrot. This is weird. Michael, that's two minutes up. <laughs> You've now got one minute to write those down. You ready? Yep. Go. I think I've got a, a fair share of everything. I'm just hoping I can translate that onto the paper and get some stuff right. No time to waste, Michael. No time to waste. Ten seconds, Michael. Just put it down. Three, two, one. That's it, Michael. Round now. Wow. <laughs> one down, three to go. OK, Peter, up you come. One blindfold, please. I, I can hear Gary plating up. And it's interesting, when you have your sight taken away, how acute your other senses become. It has a loaf shape, and uh, it's quite sticky. I identify chicken, and I think there's probably pork. Three, two, one. There you go. I was in the top 50 taste and cook, and I know that there's no wrong answers. I've got to get a protein. And so the first few things I write down is like beef, veal, chicken, <laughs> pork, every kind of animal that I can think of, because one of them's got to be right. Three, two, one. Well, guess what? Billy, it's your turn next. There's your dish. You have two minutes to identify as many ingredients as you can. When I start touching the dish, I know instantly it's a terrain. And then all I have to do is start breaking the parts and try to figure out as many ingredients inside as possible. There's so many textures, like firm, soft, crunchy. But you've got 30 seconds left. I get a few ingredients in my head. Time's up, hands off the plate. Tasting and knowing the ingredients is one thing, and also remembering and then start writing down within a minute is totally another challenge. Billy, time's up. Kumar, now it's your turn. I think because I'm a designer, I'm a very visual person. 
I can't imagine tasting something blindfolded. I just can't. I'm thrown by that completely. Kumar, literally, your fate is in your own hands. Two minutes starts now. I touch the food on the plate, and immediately I sense it is cold. I think it's going to be a dessert of sorts because it's a cold plate. I feel something really soft and squidgy, and I taste it, and it turns out to be apple. So I'm, again, I think it's something to do with a dessert. Kumar, that's a minute already. You need to put a hustle on if you're going to taste everything and identify everything you need. I start tasting it, and it tastes savory, and it throws me completely. I can't bring something cold and savory together. I guess being blindfolded has frozen part of my brain. Everything comes to a standstill. My mind goes blank. Come on, five seconds. That's it. Time's up. <laughs> Tough. You have one minute to write down as many ingredients as you can remember. When the blindfold's taken off, there are things that I can remember. But something's happened to my brain. I just can't put names to ingredients. I'm really unhappy. I know I've bombed. Sorry, my mind's gone blank. Kumar, your time's up. It should have been easy. I honestly don't know what went wrong. You've just completed our first ever blindfolded taste test. We've tallied up your scores, but before we reveal the results, let's find out what the dish is and, of course, the ingredients that make it up. The dish that you were tasting was a terrine. And it was served with an apple relish. I could kick myself. I am very familiar with the terrine. I've made terrines. Under these 24 cloches are the ingredients that went towards making that terrine. Some of you did very well, others didn't. <laughs> so let's find out what the first of these ingredients are. This is something that you all guessed correctly. Apple. You also all got thyme. Three of you got this ingredient right. Prosciutto. I was holding the piece of prosciutto. I was feeling it. I tasted it. Just could not identify it. Shallots. Parsley. I wrote parsley down, but that was a guess. Pork. I was really pleased that I managed to get that right, a protein. Two of you got this one, and it is chicken. Oh. Wish I had chicken. Garlic. It's French food. It's got to have garlic in it. Carrots. Yep, I got the carrots. Fantastic. Now, the next ingredient, only one person identified correctly. Vinegar. A lucky guess on the vinegar. Um, I was just hoping it was in that chutney. Broad beans. Pistachios. As soon as I bit into that pistachio, I knew. Again, another great ingredient to have for my dish. Only one person got this ingredient. Cabbage. Ham, or more correctly, ham hock. So far, it looks good. I think I have about six ingredients that I can cook with. Our 15th ingredient, only one person got. Stock. I got stock. It's a good basic. It gets an extra dimension to any dish. Of these last nine, not one of you got any of them. Chicken livers. Baby leeks. Duck fat. Brandy. Cardamom. Oh, no one's going to get that. Celery. I saw Kumar biting into one of these. It was a butter bean. I knew it. I, could. I bit it. I was chewing it. I couldn't put a name to it. I'm so upset with myself. Billy, you wrote down a number of herbs as your time was running out. The one you didn't write down is tarragon. <laughs> the final ingredient binding it all together, gelatin. 
These are the 24 ingredients that went into this dish. The person who scored the highest number, getting an impressive 11 ingredients correct, is Michael. Having the most ingredients could probably be a blessing as well as a curse. I guess it's probably expected me to cook a super dish because I've got a lot more ingredients than everyone else, but there's maybe too much choice. Billy, you got seven ingredients right. Peter, you got eight. Kumar, I could see you during that reveal kicking yourself. How many do you think you've got? Three or four at the most. Kumar, you're right. You've got four ingredients. But we've seen before, it's not impossible. Sometimes the simplest dishes are the great dishes. I'm really pleased that I've only got four. I think it gives you less options to make mistakes. Right, what you guys can't see is the table has been wheeled in full of one-inch cubes. We've arranged the cubes from easy to hard. The longer you stay in the game, the harder they're going to get. Right, let's get this game started. Cecilia, you're first. I am so nervous right now. My hands are starting to shake. I need to get this right. I bite into it and the fragrance pops out straight away. And I'm thinking, I've cooked this for my daughter every morning. My Granny Smith, apple. <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> apple. I'm really relieved. I'm not the first person to get out of this challenge right now. <laughs> Charlie? I've never done a blind tasting before. I can barely contain my nerves. I know I have to get this right, because there's no way I want to go into round two. I grab the cube. It feels pretty firm. Cheese? What type of cheese, Charlie? Like cheddar cheese. Correct, Charlie. Well done. <laughs> now I've got one correct. Got a little sigh of relief. Hope that I can guess a couple more right. Heavy. Off you go. Having one of the major senses taken away is scary. My heart's out of my chest. Please be a cucumber. I'm not, but what you just tasted is. Well done. Brilliant. Lucky, lucky. My first cube comes out. I'm really nervous. I don't want to go to round two of elimination. I have a feeling it's kind of squishy, but oh, it doesn't feel like a fruit or a vegetable. I have a taste, but I just can't think about what it is. I pull it apart and it comes off kind of stringy. Correct. Well done. There you go, Elise. Better? You're absolutely right. Mimi? It's an orange. Orange is right. Right, Anastasia. It's avocado. I'm really used to just picking up something and I just know it by the shape. Chocolate? The fact that all of the food is presented in the same cubes makes it really difficult to try and distinguish them. I said beef. Zoe, you're correct, that is beef. Well done. But the food knowledge is really good. Everybody's getting everything right. Watermelon. Well done. It comes around to Mimi for her second guess, and I'm looking at it, and the first thing that popped into my head was nectarine. Oh. I'm touching it, and I feel a really smooth skin. I'm tasting the food and I can taste something really nice and juicy and stringy. It's also got a really vibrant flavour to it. I love this, I always eat it. <laughs> but I can't think of the name. 
It's smooth. It's a nectarine. What's your answer? Mm -hmm. It's an egg drain. Smooth. <laughs> Mimi? Yes. Take your blindfold off. Oh, shit. I'm sorry it's wrong. Oh. Can you tell now? Mango. Mango is my favourite fruit. I pretty much eat it every day and I got it wrong. It's something so familiar, but without sight, I had no idea what it was. Right. Go and stand over there. You're into round two. Sorry, Mimi. I'm the first one through to round two. I'm really disappointed. I'm freaking out because this is one step closer to going home. Anastasia. It's so nerve-wracking. I know I have a good knowledge of food, but my taste buds are almost, like, diminished because I'm so nervous. You know what it is, Anastasia? Is it a carrot? You sure? Yes. Anastasia? It is a carrot. Oh, my God. <laughs> Right, Cecilia. One spot is taken for the second stage of elimination. There's three left. It's getting harder and harder as the rounds go. Oh, it's so smooth. So I taste something really salty, and I know it, but what comes in, like, a thick thing tastes like, oh, I don't know, feels like chicken, but it's really salty. Cecilia, what is it? It's salty. Having something in a cube, it's really, really confusing. What's your answer? I don't know. Um, I'm so nervous. I'm feeling a bit mind blank. I just can't think on this spot. I need it. Chicken. I'm sorry, Cecilia. That's wrong. Oh. What is it? Ham. Ham. Please join Mimi. You're in round two. My heart sinks because I was on the elimination a few days ago. I can't believe that I have to cook for my survival again. So Mimi, Cecilia, you're the first two contestants through to round two. And remember, guys, we're looking for two more. Pressure's on. Charlie. Mm -hmm. Got a little gem for you here. Is it eggplant? Charlie, well done. That's eggplant. Heather? Pineapple. Right, Zoe. Tomato. Here you go, Liz. I don't know. Liz, we need an answer. Uh, a radish. Well done, Liz. Everyone is doing really well, and I'm really worried. Cauliflower? You're correct. There's definitely added pressure because it's getting harder and harder. Charlie, you're next. Uh, it's blue cheese. Charlie, that is correct. And all of a sudden, it's my turn again. I hope I can name that cube. Heather, for you. Yes. I pick up the cube and it's so wet and I taste it and I'm like, oh, yeah, instant memory back to grandma. Um, having like, half a grapefruit and it was so tart that I used to get her to sprinkle sugar on mine. So I think that memory just takes over for me. That's a grapefruit. Yeah. Heather, please remove your blindfold. I'm sorry, you're wrong. What is it? Lemon. It? Lemon. It's a lemon. I'm in shock. I am so... I was 100% sure. I can't believe it. It's, yeah, this isn't good. Zoe. Yes? Zoe. No. Zoe, it's back no. to you. It's kind of slimy. Have a sniff. Doesn't really smell like much. Have a taste, and it's kind of meaty. <laughs> You're not a fan. <laughs> I pull it apart. 
hard a little bit and then I sniff my fingers. So like fish. So I'm thinking it could be tuna, could be salmon, could be trout. They're the only three fishes that I really think that I could eat raw. Can I do something weird? Yeah, you can do something weird. Depends on how weird it is. How weird is it? I just want to feel the texture properly on my lips. Yeah, cool. What, what, a white? No, don't, don't laugh. It, it's the way that Fern and Andrea tastes ham, tastes prosciutto. What, why are you doing, why are you touching it to your lips? I want to feel the texture. Mm hmm I think the most sensitive part on my face is my lips. <laughs> And sometimes when you touch something with your fingers, you can't really, you don't get the same sensation. I smell what? Do you recognise the smell? I think so. Is it tuna? You're absolutely right, it's tuna. Well done. Great work. Well done, love. That was hard. Tuna's right, and I can't believe that I've got it right and my lip trick worked. <laughs> Elise. Mm. I'm so stressed out right now. The cooks in round two are such tough competition. I do not want to join them. Whatever this cube is, I have to get it right. Oh, it's like squishy. I'm feeling it and it, it's a weird texture. I'm thinking, what is this? I try to pull it apart to see whether it breaks in half and it doesn't. So I start smelling it and yeah, it smells like meat. Oh my God. The texture, it's a protein. I know it's definitely a protein. It, it tastes like veal. I'm thinking, what else could it be? What's your answer? Veal. Sorry. Not. It's not veal. You can take off your blindfold. What do you reckon it is now? You're looking at it. Lamb? Are you kidding me? Absolutely. It's lamb. It's funny, isn't it? Once yeah. you look at it, you kind of know. At least go and join the others. I'm sorry. <gasps> You're in round two. Uh oh. 